Did you just see Maduro, Venezuela, though it's a... Unbelievable. That's Donald Trump trying to speak at an event in Greensboro, North Carolina. You see there his cognitive failing. Let me show you another part where you'll see this again. Play the clip. Heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will be uh, will. And folks, there were multiple cognitive moments here in Donald Trump's speech in North Carolina. Um, here he talks about migrant time. Play the clip. Frankly, it's too long. So we call it migrant crime. I come, I came up with that name because I come up with a lot of good names, don't I? But you know. Next, he talks about wall mongers. Play the clip. We will demolish the deep state. We will expel the wall mongers from our government. Next, Donald Trump talks about how special counsel Jack Smith stinks. That's the word that Donald Trump says. He goes, he, he stinks, he stinks. Play this clip. Too far. He's a man, he's a, a, just a terrible human being, but he's a deranged person who wants to hurt people. And we, we're hurting him. I'll tell you, we're hurting him. He stinks. That's not the kind of people. You know, being a prosecutor is a very important thing. Being a fair and good prosecutor is a very important thing. But some of these animals, I mean, they are bad. And if you've studied patients with dementia, you'll know that as they struggle to try to find the words to uh, address certain things, they'll go back to things like you stink or you suck or you whatever. That's what Donald Trump's doing right there. Um, here, Donald Trump says that President Joe Biden was absolutely exonerated last week. Play this clip. Think of this. Joe Biden was totally exonerated last week. He's got 10 times the documents and they're classified. And, and then he says, President Biden looks like hell. Donald Trump focusing on President Biden's looks. And by the way, it's probably not a smart move where you are profusely sweating in an area that is not hot and you're having these cognitive moments. But anyway, play the clip. What they've done is it's all coming out of crooked Joe Biden because Look, he can't campaign, he can't campaign, he can't speak, he can't walk, he looks like hell. Then Donald Trump brags about the musical he's created with January 6th insurrectionists. Instead of the national anthem, Donald Trump plays a song that he made with the January 6th insurrectionists and calls them hostages and has people pledge allegiance to the J6 insurrectionists. Here, play this clip. They've done to people you heard the hostages singing. That was the hostages. They're the J6 hostages, I call them, because they are hostages. They're policemen, they're firemen, they're accountants. They're lawyers in some cases. They're put in jail for extended periods of time, for very long periods of time. They're hostages. You heard them singing. You heard the spirit that they had? The spirit is unbelievable. That song became the number one song and you, you can Next, Donald Trump praises Lauren Boebert to play the clip. And Lauren, you're going to do fantastically in your district. Lauren Boebert, thank you. Lauren's from afar, but she's here. And then Donald Trump takes credit for the success of the stock market and says, all these people, all these executives from New York are saying that the stock market's doing well because of me, he says here, play this clip. By the way, you know, the stock market's gone up. There are big professionals, some of the people I know, the biggest, smartest guys on Wall Street. You know why it's going up? Because they think I'm gonna win the election. And if we don't win the election, you're gonna see what happens. Then Donald Trump just has this unintelligible attack. I'm not even sure what he's even talking about here at all. So I won't even try to give it any context. Play this clip. You know, one of the uh, opponents long gone, one of our Republican opponents said, well, I can serve for eight years and it's going to take eight years. I said, let him get that expression out a little bit longer and then I'll hit him with it. I said, listen, if it takes eight years, you don't want to vote for that person because this should take a year. We're going to get everything done in three months six months and a year and we're going to start drilling we're going to start drill 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 next he talks about when he's giving speeches they tell him to uh they they tell him to put the red light off here play this clip that's a lot of fake news back there wow uh-oh the red lights are starting to go off 
Anytime I start talking, they take the red light off. You know, it's hard when CNN... Then Donald Trump confesses to having classified documents at Mar-a-Lago and having stolen classified documents. Play the clip. Where's Hunter? Where is he? Where's Hunter? No, they had stuff coming in and out and they were stored in Chinatown. They also had him under his beautiful Corvette. The Corvette was dumping grease all over him. They were in the garage. You know, it's one of those doors that costs very little money that you can take a scissor and cut. Whereas mine were at the great Mar-a-Lago. I had secret service all over the place. I had a locked door. You know, they asked me, could I put another lock? I sh we showed them. I said, here's where they're stored. Then Donald Trump claims that under the Presidential Records Act, he can do whatever he wants with the records, which is, again, false, but he is asserting in that case absolute presidential immunity and claiming that he can declare nuclear secrets and war plans his personally. And here he says it. Play the clip. Indicted me. You could never indict him on the document hoax. I come under the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to do all of that. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. New York Times did a story. Then he goes on a rant saying that he is a political dissident. Play the clip. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being indicted for you. I am. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I stand before you today, not only as your past and hopefully future president, but as a proud political dissident and as a public enemy of a rogue regime. This is a rogue and dangerous machine. This is a anti-democratic machine. These people are thugs and they're bullies. And what they've done to people, you heard the hostages singing. That was the hostages. They're the J6 hostages, I call them, because they are hostages. They're policemen, they're firemen, they're accountants. They're lawyers in some cases. They're put in jail for extended periods of time, for very long periods of time. They're hostages. You heard them singing. You heard the spirit that they had? Yes. The spirit is unbelievable. That song became the number one song. And you, you can check me on, you know, they always check my facts. The fa oh, look at all that fake news. It's a lot of, that's a lot of fake news back there. Wow. Uh-oh, the red lights are starting to go off. And then he says our country is being attacked by both fascists and communists. Here, play the clip. He's letting fascists run our country. He's letting communists run our country. And let me show you this from the beginning of the uh, event before it even started, when uh, one of the young kids who attended this event uh, was asked about uh, the, the event. And, and here's what he said. Play this clip. Yes, sir. Let's put Fanny and Nikki in jail. Okay. We can. There we go. Maybe you can make that happen. Uh, you know, and folks, this is one of the things that I think about all the time. I think about younger generations and our children and grandchildren and they are kids. And when you have someone like that and Donald Trump going up there and just saying all of these horrible things and unhinged things over and over, very dangerous things. I mean, to me, it's just setting such a horrible example. And look, what Donald Trump is saying is absolutely dangerous. It's absolutely anti-American. It's absolutely against the values of any democracy. But again, it's also just not normal. And when media tries to normalize what you just saw or tries to act like that's powerful and, and strong, it, it isn't. I mean, we're watching a kind of uh, profusely sweating orange blob, blob discombobulate before our eyes and have these, you know, cognitive breakdowns on stage. And uh, I guess for the MAGA cult members, that's what owning the libs is about, having someone who behaves like that get access to the nuclear arsenal of the United States. And I mean, this is serious business stuff. And as I've always said, I mean, you know, what, what this comes down to is democracy. It comes down to normalcy comes down to just kind of basic competency. And what you saw there with cognitive moment after cognitive moment is just uh, uh, very, very, very strange and, 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 and odd. But tell me what you think in the comments. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Thanks for watching.
Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.